let's say that we had a couple of routers located at different sites, separated by the internet, or maybe a service provider's cloud, and we needed those two routers to appear to be layer two adjacent. Perhaps they needed to form a neighborship between themselves. One way we can make that happen is to create a generic routing encapsulation, or a GRE tunnel, between these two routers. With a GRE configuration, we can send a packet out of a router, and we can send it out of a tunnel interface, as opposed to a physical interface. We're logically sending it down this big long tunnel, which might wind its way through many routers that are out on the internet. But from the perspective of the routers, this logical tunnel through which the packet is traveling appears to be a single hop. Then the packet emerges from the tunnel, the tunnel header is removed, and the packet is sent on its way. GRE, however, it does have an issue, even though it is very generic. In other words, it can encapsulate just about any layer 3 protocol you can imagine, including unicast IP, multicast IP, broadcast, IPX, Apple Talk, and the list goes on and on. Even though it's very flexible as to what it can encapsulate, by itself, it does not do security. However, what we can do is use GRE in tandem with IPSec. Consider this topology. Routers R1 and R2 need to communicate securely between one another. And like we said, a GRE tunnel can logically interconnect routers R1 and R2. GRE, however, is not going to add security to that traffic. It's not going to do encryption. It's not going to do authentication. However, IPSec can do those things. And you might wonder, why don't we just do IPSec to start with? Why even bother with GRE? Interestingly, IPSec has its own limitation, and that is it can secure unicast IP traffic, but not multicast IP traffic, and not broadcast IP traffic. And traffic between our sites might very well be broadcast or multicast traffic. For example, routing protocols, many of them rely on multicasts. But what if we did this? What if we encapsulated unicast IP, broadcast, multicast, whatever we wanted, we can encapsulate inside of a GRE packet. And if we take a look at a GRE packet, what is that packet? Regardless of what it contains, the GRE packet itself is a unicast IP packet. Exactly what we can send down an IPsec tunnel. What we can do, therefore, is take whatever traffic we want to send between these two routers, put that traffic into a GRE tunnel, and then put the GRE traffic into an IPsec tunnel. This is a really common approach in the VPN world where we can encapsulate just about anything we want and secure it. And what we want to do now in this video is to see how we can set up a basic GRE tunnel. Let's go out to a live interface and take a look. Using this topology on screen, let's set up a GRE tunnel between routers R1 and R4. We see that physically, in order to get from R1 to R4, we have to pass through routers R2 and R3. However, we're going to set up a GRE tunnel so it's going to appear that it's a single hop from R1 over to R4. Let's begin on router R1. We're going to create out of thin air a virtual tunnel interface. We can do that by saying interface tunnel, and we give a locally significant identifier. I'm just going to say interface tunnel 1, and we can assign an IP address to this tunnel, just like we would assign an IP address to any of our router interfaces. Let's say IP address, and I'll say it's 192.168.0.1, and since I only need two IP addresses for this tunnel, I'm going to use a 30-bit subnet mask. We'll say 255.255.255.252. Now I need to tell router R1 what's the source of this tunnel and what's the destination of this tunnel. I'm going to say that my tunnel source, in context sensitive help shows us that I could specify an IP address or an interface. What I typically do is say, the tunnel source is the loopback interface on this router. I'm going to say it's interface loopback 0. And for the destination, I'm going to specify the IP address of router R4's loopback interface. We'll say tunnel destination 4.4.4.4. And we're done with our configuration on router R1. Let's go to router R4, and on router R4 we'll give a complementary configuration. Let's say interface tunnel one, and let's give an IP address for this tunnel. I'll say it's 192.168.0.2 with a 30-bit subnet mask. That IP address is in the same subnet as the IP address we gave to the other side of the tunnel. Who is my tunnel source? We're going to say it's loopback zero, and the destination is going to be the IP address of the loopback interface on router R1, which is 1.1.1.1. And we're done with our configuration on router R4. Oh, and I have some confirmation that it's working. Look at that. We just formed an EIGRP neighborship over that tunnel because I had told both of these routers that all of the interfaces should participate in EIGRP, and we just formed a neighborship over this tunnel. However, let's do some further verification. Let's do a show IP interface brief. 
and we can see this newly created tunnel interface. We can see its IP address, and it is in the up, up state. Fantastic. Can I ping the other side of the tunnel? Can I do a ping to 192.168.0.1? Yes, I can. And we can get more information about this tunnel by doing a show interface tunnel 1. We can see the tunnel source. We can see the tunnel destination. And we can see that the encapsulation is tunnel. This is telling me that this is a GRE tunnel. But the real test is to do a trace route. Let's make sure that the far end of this tunnel appears to be only one router hop away. Let's do a trace route to the other side of this tunnel. Let's do a trace route to 192.168.0.1. How many hops away? It's only one. Look at that. Our next hop was the other end of the tunnel, and that was our destination. Even though our package really went from R4 to R3 to R2 to R1, logically, it appears that we're just one hop away. And that's a look at how we can create a generic routing encapsulation, or a GRE tunnel.